Have you ever wondered what it takes to turn a digital idea into something you can physically touch? What if I told you the future of money started not in a fancy bank, but right next to an espresso machine in a small coffee shop? This isn't a story about stocks. This isn't a story about real estate. This is about a machine that looked like an ATM but didn't give out dollars or cents. Instead, it dispensed something entirely new. Bitcoin. It was a strange sight. A boxy terminal promising to connect the old world of cash with the new, confusing world of digital currency. Most people who walked by probably had no idea what they were looking at. They were just there to get their morning latte, unaware that a quiet revolution was beginning beside them. This machine was a bridge, a physical gateway to something that had only existed on computer screens and in the minds of a few tech enthusiasts. Before this ATM, getting Bitcoin was complicated and often risky. It brought an abstract concept down to earth, placing it in ordinary settings and making it feel approachable. Before this magical box appeared, buying Bitcoin was a real adventure, and I don't mean that in a good way. Imagine you wanted to invest in something new today. You'd probably go to a sleek app on your phone, link your bank account, and click a button. Easy, right? Well, back in the early 2010s, it was the complete opposite for Bitcoin. There were no user-friendly apps. There were no trusted mainstream companies handling transactions. It was a niche world, and getting in required a lot of effort and a willingness to take on significant risk. The primary way to get Bitcoin was through online exchanges, many of which were new unregulated and operated from overseas. To use one, you often had to go through a complicated verification process. Then, you had to perform an international bank wire, a slow and expensive process, sending your hard-earned cash to a company you had never heard of, hoping they would credit your account with Bitcoin. It was a high-stakes gamble before you even bought your first fraction of a coin. The solution came from an unexpected place, Las Vegas. It was the brainchild of three friends, Jordan Kelly, John Russell, Mitch Demeter. These weren't Wall Street bankers or Silicon Valley billionaires. They were entrepreneurs with a background in software and a keen eye for opportunity. They saw the incredible potential of Bitcoin but were frustrated by how difficult it was to acquire. They knew it needed a physical presence. It needed something people could see, touch, and interact with in the real world. Their big idea was to build a machine that would do for Bitcoin what the ATM did for banking. They founded a company called Robocoin. Their mission was simple but incredibly ambitious, to build the world's first two-way Bitcoin ATM. Not only would it allow people to buy Bitcoin with cash, but it would also let them sell their Bitcoin and get cash back. This was a game changer. It created a complete loop connecting the digital world of cryptocurrency directly to the physical world of paper money. They weren't just building a dispenser, they were building a full-service kiosk for a new kind of economy. It was an idea that could finally break down the barriers that kept so many people on the sidelines, watching with confused curiosity. The big day was October 29, 2013. The world's first ever publicly accessible Bitcoin ATM went live inside the Waves coffee shop in downtown Vancouver. It was a monumental moment not just for the Robocoin founders, but for the entire cryptocurrency community. News crews, curious locals gathered to witness history being made. For the first time, anyone with a few Canadian dollars in their pocket could walk up to a machine and buy Bitcoin in a matter of minutes. The very first transaction was made by a man named Jackson Warren, who was a local Bitcoin enthusiast. He walked up to the bright blue kiosk, placed his palm on the scanner for identity verification, inserted a few Canadian dollar bills. On the screen, he followed the simple prompts, scanned a QR code from his smartphone's Bitcoin wallet, and confirmed the transaction. A moment later, the machine beeped, and the Bitcoin appeared in his digital wallet. The crowd cheered. The bridge between cash and crypto was officially open for business, generating headlines in major news outlets all around the world. Using the first Bitcoin ATM was designed to be as straightforward as possible, and that was its true genius. Let's walk through a simple example. Imagine a student named Sarah who had read about Bitcoin online and wanted to buy a small amount, $20 worth. Now she could just walk into the Waves coffee shop. She would approach the machine. It looked like a modern parking meter or a ticket kiosk. It had a large touchscreen and a cash slot. The screen greeted her with a simple menu, buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin. It felt familiar and unintimidating. First, Sarah needed to identify herself. The machine used a palm vein scanner for security. It sounds high-tech, but it was quick and simple. That created a unique ID for her without requiring a driver's license or passport. She opened a wallet app on her phone. 
the machine scanned the QR code. Within a minute or two, a notification popped up. She had received the Bitcoin. This two-way functionality was revolutionary. The appearance of that first Bitcoin ATM did more than just simplify a transaction. It fundamentally changed the relationship between people and digital money. Before that day in Vancouver, trust in Bitcoin was a very abstract concept. You had to trust in complex mathematics and the anonymous network of miners in faceless online exchanges. The Robocoin machine offered a different kind of trust, the trust of the physical world. It was a heavy, solid steel box. You could touch it. You could see it work. You could put your cash in and get a digital receipt, or send your crypto and get physical cash back. It was tangible. This machine served as a powerful educational tool. Every person who used it or even just watched someone else use it learned a fundamental lesson about how cryptocurrency worked. But through a simple, hands-on experience, the legacy of that first machine is visible all over the world today. As of 2025, there are tens of thousands of Bitcoin ATMs spread across dozens of countries. It was a small step for a single machine in a Canadian coffee shop, but it was a giant leap.